You'll have to give me a second here. I'm trying to pull this up on this phone deal. I'm trying to find the last radio show we did. Um, of course, um, I don't like Burger King, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. We we found it. Um, in order for me to read the comments there. <laughs> Good morning, Saturday morning, back with you. Uh, we got some uh, stuff to talk about. I'm gonna go ahead and read through your comments and everything, and um, also got some other things to talk about. Maybe something funny for you, or you might find it funny. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, uh, gonna go through the comments. Uh, if your comment was not read, um, we always, I always uh, kind of try to remember to go over this with everybody. Um, if your comment was not read, there could be multiple things that, uh, uh, one of the more obvious reasons is the moderator um, pulled it. Uh, I guess obvious for me, uh, the moderator would pull it or whatnot, and so it just won't appear. And, you know, that could be any reason. I don't know what the, exactly. Also, there is a, you know, there is stuff like uh that it automatically uh, rejects uh, based on things like profanity and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and leading on to that, um, uh, we we're not gonna. I'm not gonna go through politics. Um, not gonna go through any kind of you know uh, shaming on anybody or uh, profanity in itself. Okay, we just don't do that. Whereas we're family friendly here on this channel or on the show. Uh, so it's not really a channel anymore. It's mostly uh, the uh, Saturday morning show. So anyway, here we go. No particular order. We have one up from Slim Fire. And that is good morning. Uh, and the first Jack Nicholson movie for me was uh, Easy Rider and a horror movie. You're probably talking about what it was that one called The Terror. I think it was The Terror that he was in. Um, uh, Night of the Living Dead. And uh, or I had vinyl records and a track um, in player in my truck. My dad had a track. Um, we've come a long way since. Uh, thanks for the video. You are welcome, Slim. All right, Jeffrey Richardson says, Good morning. Sip of coffee for all, all of us working stiffs. The nine to fivers out there. The, those of us that struggle from check to check. That never seems to add up in the end. And he also says, Nice grip pattern. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Joe P., swig of coffee for Joe. Uh, I'm not a vinyl collector, but managed to hold on to my records from my teenage years. I even kept my very first purchased album. My mom purchased it for me in 1971 off a radio promo for K uh, KCBQ, uh, San Diego's premier radio station at the time, uh, entitled KCBQ 22 Heavy Hits. Uh, I love this so much I put the album in a frame and hung it up in my hobby room. Also, that, that leads me to something. Um, I wanted to throw this out. It'd be a fun thing for all of us, uh, you know, everybody that is in the comment section that has been commenting on that. And this is based on uh, off of uh, Joe P's uh, comment here. Um, most of us, I guess, have a hobby room or man cave, if you will, and uh, that we've kind of put together. Mine is actually um, being occupied by a bunch of just trash all over the place. Uh, so that's why we haven't been actually filming there lately. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask, what is the item that you had that prior to, I guess how we're going to word this, prior to building or constructing or getting ready to know that that is going to be my hobby room, what was that item that you knew was going to be hanging on that wall or put in the background somewhere? That What's that one item that you, you knew that was going to be in there on display because it was something that you really liked or uh, it definitely just had that grab to it and you, you knew it was going to be in that room or that area that you chose? All right. So we'll, we'll be fun to see what uh, items everybody chose or... Uh, talk about here in the comment section and we'll go ahead and read those through next week all right frank thank you for your time and work always enjoy you're welcome frank 
All right. Glenn, good morning. Uh, Chien, New Brunswick, 6.04 a.m. Uh, I'm guessing that's a place. Uh, all right. Mike, it's 6 or it's 3 a.m. Go away. Come back later. Best, best wishes from Montana. That would be from uh, MH. Um, Bohemian Hunting Club, another great channel out there. That's a that's a truck box set. <laughs> Crazy Scotsman, sad uh, that most these days look like ghosts when you say VHS. Uh, those were the days. Metallica, yes sir. Um, seen them live a couple of times. Well worth it. Uh, love the color of those grips. I do appreciate that. And that is it on the comments. Um, yeah, um, it's kind of interesting, you know, I never thought, you know, as time would go on uh, in life for me that, you know, it's kind of crazy where you think, you know, like, I guess some uh, uh, the younger, you know, people would, uh, you know, they look it up on YouTube now. They can just see a clip and then they, I guess, feel like maybe they're they're They've seen the movie or they're like somehow like part of that subject matter. They could talk about it or whatnot. And it's so interesting. It's like, man, some of us um, were not only it's like we were there, we saw it in the theater or man, I mean, had, you know, I mean, we was having to press rewind so we didn't get charged a dollar. <laughs> we went to go return the tape. <laughs> All right. So um, this, I'm going to actually, uh, this section of the show is going to be, I kind of thought this, and this is in more, uh, take this in humor. That's what this is more for. This is in humor. Um, I'm I'm going about this in humor. Don't I'm not a uh, I'm not trying to make this sound like a, a complaint. It's not a complaint. I am making fun of this because I think it's hilarious. Because this is in the same context of when you see something like this. Limited lifetime warranty. What does that mean? I really would like to know what a limited lifetime warranty is. Things like that. Okay, um, I have actually taken the liberty to take a marker and remove the name of this because I didn't want to. Again, this is not some like knock at this thing or place, but I'm sure everybody's going to recognize it. Um, those of us we shop at a local hardware store. Yep, and you get something like this in the mail because you're part of their rewards program. And it is like, I'm going to read this because I, I got one of these. Um, $7 off your next purchase of $20 or more uh, regular price merchandise. Okay? That's what it says. You get some, I mean, I love how the big $7 off, but you have to spend 20 bucks. So that means you're going in there with the intention of you're, you're going to have to, you know, whatever it is, you're going to be at least spending at least $13 plus tax, right? But turn this wonderful thing around, okay? And it says valid for one transaction online or in a mobile app or participating stores, limited current store or online stock. Not valid on all brands or offers or even, uh, even if shown within the, uh, this mailer, it is not valid on the following unless specified in the offer okay these things are disqualified from you using this okay so this is gonna matter meaning that if you go to to do it and say okay I got this product I've got that product I've got this product and I got this there's my 20 bucks give me my seven dollars off oh but this product because it's by clean bore is not part of that so therefore that gets excluded now you don't have enough to get the seven dollars off because now this is only eighteen dollars and seventy three cents okay <laughs> that's what so that's where you're running into the little bit of a problem there okay so what is excluded here we go this is the list I'm reading it from the card rentals services gift cards government issued items um, garbage tags that's in parentheses. I don't know what that's supposed to mean or commas or whatever. Um, building materials, pet food, fuel, power tools, equipment, uh, water heaters, Benjamin Moore, green egg, 
Um, that's that big ceramic kiln that you would, be, you know, go out and barbecue stuff, I guess somewhat barbecue. Uh, Ego, that's the, uh, they mostly make um, lawn and garden type uh, hedgers, weed whackers, that kind of stuff. Uh, Magnolia Home and uh, Joanna Gaines Paint, Steel, Toro, Traeger, Weber, Yeti, um, and such, uh, these are all these items. Okay, now, I'm just, that, that's the list of the items. I'm going to just, what would you use that for? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're basically, <laughs> that's like 90% of the, the, the stuff you go there for. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't know, but I had to throw that out there. I had to throw that out there. Okay. All right. Next up, I figure we talk about this movie because um, this is one of those movies that I don't remember. I, I do recall seeing it in the theater. I do recall seeing it in the theater. It's not old. This is definitely not old. Um, but it's one of those newer movies that kind of, uh, it's a rare thing where they're, I'm very selective on new movies. And most of the new movies that I will go and enjoy that I will actually go and see and usually um, a lot of it is horror related um, I'm just a junkie for that stuff but um, there's a lot of stuff out there I just think I, I walk away eh okay saw it cool um, is it something I own when I own a movie it means I'm watching it over and over again uh, and I'm very particular sometimes I just straight up don't like the actor um, like there's certain um, actors I just won't own their movies because I can't stand them. It's not it, and it has nothing to do with their opinion on something or their stance on something. It's just they just irritate me and I can't stand them. So as a, an actor, um, so all right, this movie is called You Are Next. Yes, and I bought it locally at the local uh, record store because I support my local. Um, physical media places and this came from Zia Records they are I, I go there and it's a bit I'm a big supporter of them I love Zia Records down here in town this movie is called you're next what is this movie about all right when did this come out 2013 okay so very recent uh, movie all right this movie is about a family reunion going on at a house and they all get together, and it's brothers mainly. And you can see there's tension between, you know, there's one that's really just at the bit, making waves and all that. I think there's three brothers, if I'm not mistaken. There's three brothers in it. They all get together in this house. Okay, well, this is a typical um, bad person or killer slasher outside, getting in, picking people off one by one, wearing masks, the whole bit. Great stuff. Love it. You got me in. Right when you say that kind of a plot line, I'm in. So, I'm definitely in on this one. Um, it's just one of those that I thought was just pure mayhem. And it was actually pretty good. For those of you that are actually wanting to see this, I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. Or, the I guess, the what ends up happening. But I'm going to tell you this much. There is, and I love it when they do this. Um, and of course, she's an Aussie, so I love her even more. Uh, she ends up being, hey, the ultimate, you know, survivalist, and says, hey, no, and everybody's kind of like taken by that, like, whoa. She's a bit like, ah, we're not going to be able to take this one down. <laughs> so, and she starts using everything from uh, meat tenderizers to a blender. <laughs> so it's a little bit of, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because. Her whole take on the whole thing kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman and Stradox. You know, the whole boiling oil and stuff on the pot, on the uh, stove and everything like that. So that was another really, I love that gritty film. So that that's really, um, so it's an interesting one. So I, it's in the collection. I own it. Um, this falls in the same category as the movie The Strangers. I'm a really big fan of that movie. I like that, including its sequel, The Strangers 2. And I think... I don't know if they're making another one or something, but I hope they do. I really like that movie. Um, I love the masks, uh, the mask, the guy with the cloth mask in The Strangers, because it reminds me a lot like the uh, the 
um, the Phantom murder, uh, Moonlight murders uh, that took place in Texarkana that uh, was supposedly like a sack or something, a mask of some sort that the, the guy was wearing that was, it ended up being turned into a movie called The Town the Dreaded Sundown uh, that came out in the 70s. And believe it or not, Ben Johnson's in that. And that that's a good one uh, that came out that was based on that. It also had a sequel or a prequel, I don't know, whatever you call it, a remake, I guess, which wasn't very good at all. Don't even bother with that one. Um, but the original one from the 70s is not bad. I, I think there was other horror um, motifs that took after it. Friday the 13th Part 2 kind of took the to the to that or took that look with the potato sack. And um, also I think uh, like kind of like you can almost say the, when the Zodiac murders are taking place. I think he used a bag or something uh, in one of the sequences. But anytime they do a really good job with a mask that I think and I think with the masks the more bland or more plain that they look, I think that's the ticket. Because if you look at like the original Halloween movie, 1978, that mask with the initial shock of it, you know, of course now it's just been, it's so ubiquitous that it, it, it lost its effect. But when it first came out, you know, it, it had a shock to it. And I think it's because of that. Now these masks are okay in it. They're like little animal masks. Um, I think it's better than, for sure, it's better than the, um, the, the what was the, the one that Eli Roth did recently called Thanks Killing or something. Um, thought it was an okay movie. It's a fun movie. Crazy, you know, slasher type uh, ordeal. But wasn't a fan of the mask. To me, it just wasn't menacing. I, I just, it was kind of, actually kind of like goofy. I didn't really find it all that great. Um, there's some masks out there. I love, I'm a, you know, and I'm a sucker for masked, you know, murderer, you know, horror movie type uh, genre. So, and I definitely didn't, didn't care for that one. Uh, it was okay uh, for what it was, but uh, yeah, uh, it just didn't do it for me. But anyway, your next your next was good. I, I good enough for I where I bought it. So there you have it there. So <laughs> um, on the other note, um, what I have been doing lately, I guess, if you for those of you that are still here at 17 minutes of your life, you'll never get back. Um, that if you're interested in, I guess, hearing this about what I have been doing lately, uh, pretty much on a weekly, we have we've actually my buddy and I have foregoed shooting. Um, we have been doing something called an escape room, and I've talked about that a little bit. We have been somewhat addicted to escape rooms. By the way, if you're going to do escape room, absolutely a must. Bring a flashlight. <laughs> bring your flashlight. Um, yeah, I'm old school. Yeah, I just bring a flashlight. Uh, you could use your cell phone or whatnot. I just use this flashlight. And uh, this has been the flashlight I've taken on, on a number of those escape rooms. This is the one I've taken uh, with me. So just bought this, you know, nothing nothing fancy. This is not anything like, you know, oh, I got to have this, you know, three dollars $400 flight. Like this is like five bucks. Um, bought it from the, uh, the local uh, Cal's Ranch place down here. Um, bought it from them. So I've been using this. I also have a smaller, um, more of a pen light one that I've been taking too. Uh, it depends on how it goes about, but yeah, definitely. But I've been enjoying this, the escape rooms because I think they're interesting. I think they're very interesting because it's like you're solving problem, you're solving little, uh, it's real hands-on. It's like you're really living a, I guess what everybody's, all the kids now just play video games. This is hands-on, you're actually there, you're within the whole games, you know, yourself. You are the game because you're physically there. You're not sitting at home in front of the TV on the couch, uh, eating cookies, playing, you know, PlayStation or whatever it is, I don't know. Um, you're, you know, you're out there, you're, you're having to work together, you're communicating, you know, this. You're not allowed to use your cell phones. I mean, you can use it for a flashlight, but you're not allowed to look things up or add things together. You, uh, this is totally old-fashioned way 
Um, you get a, a pencil and a piece of paper if you need to write things down or do a, uh, uh, mathematical problems or whatnot like that. So that, that's, uh, and I'm definitely the furthest thing from a mathematician or even uh, anything outside basic math. Um, I struggle. All right, one, we did one that where you had to line things up on a table and you had to get the square root of things like that. That was quite a bit of a challenge because, um, and I kind of even looked to my, my buddy for the, the, the questions like, hey, what are we going to do here? Like, you know, because I was really like, uh, I'm really not, uh, not Akamai there in on that one. So I had, to, I had to rely on him for that. And he was struggling with that. And I kind of thought, oh, boy, if he's struggling, we're, we're, in, we're, in the, we're up the creek here. This is going to be <laughs> difficult. So, uh, but yeah. We did a few of them now so far, and they're they're fun. Um, there's actually one closer uh, to town here, um, and it was a horror oriented one that I think was a lot better. I, I really liked it, even though it, too bad it was uh, it was something that we had figured out already. And so, unfortunately, that's the downfall of it. Once you figure out the room, and once you've passed it, there really isn't uh, going back. I guess there you really because it's it's a waste of money at that point because you already know how to get out the the clues and everything you already know <clears throat> the idea is I guess this is kind of a double-edged sword the idea is you go back and retry it that sucks because you already kind of know what you're walking into and these are not cheap these rooms are not cheap at least in our neck of the woods um, we've noticed it in, in around here these joints that we've been going to they're not cheap at all they're kind of expensive so you know you really when you get in there you kind of got to really um you got to really be on point the minute they close that door and you know and let you go and, and say hey have at it um get up off your duff and really start hustling and going which i did not do the very first time I went to one. Um, I went with, uh, I took my mom to go when she was visiting, and then we went with uh, my friend as well. And I thought, <laughs> you know, first thing I thought was, well, heck, you know, I, I really didn't, you get an hour time limit. I didn't know you did that, or I didn't know they did that. Um, I thought it wasn't until you, you get out. So maybe during the course when they said something about an hour, I didn't really like, I was like, either it went right over my head, or I thought, an hour, like, we're gonna, this will be, you know, a long time. That hour goes by before you even know what happened. That, that hour is gone. <laughs> You're sitting there trying to figure this stuff out. So, anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> escape rooms. Uh, very, very interesting stuff, so... <laughs> They have been very interesting. So, that's it. I will leave you to it. And uh, join me next week on uh, our next radio show. And don't forget, uh, what is that item that you are going to put in your man cave, your hobby room, or whatever, or your ladies cave, um, or just your area that you wanted to make your own stuff what's that one item that you knew prior to getting that room or or whatever set up that you knew was going to 